I'm just pinching one to take to Drew and Sarah. cheese is one of the easiest things you can smoke so if that you're just starting out on the smoking journey cold smoked cheese is the easiest thing you can do because basically you just light the smoker uh, leave the cheese in there and go away come back and it's done so as so long as the temperature isn't going to get too high and I don't think today it's going to get above about 12 degrees Celsius um, I'm going to get out there and smoke some cheese so it's partly inspired because I bought this huge lump of Tor Valley mature cheddar um, so I'm going to smoke this today. I'm going to use my Pro-Q smoker. Now if you haven't seen one of these before, it's a great little gizmo for cold smoking food. You put the sawdust in here, which I've got here. I've just put it in the oven for a little while just to make sure it's totally dry. And it goes in this little maze. You put a little tea light in here, just like that, lit. That starts the burning, makes it smoulder, and then it just smoulders all the way through this. And it takes about 12 hours, roughly, for a full load of that. So it's um, very economical, and you can pretty much leave it to itself. You don't have to worry about checking it and making sure it's still alight. Um, I still do, just because I like to see how things are going. So that's what you need for cold smoking. I thought since I'm here, I may as well have a little chat to you about um, other types of smoking. So you've got cold smoking, where you have sawdust essentially going through on a long cold smoke on this when the temperature's cool. And that's good for things like cheese. Uh, you can do that with fish. I've done lots of uh, salmon. I've done herring. Um, you know, I've done halibut. So you do cold smoking, normally then you would probably cook the fish afterwards, although not with smoked salmon. Um, and then you've got hot smoking, where you give it a period of cool smoke first, and then you raise the temperature to actually cook the product. So things like uh, salmon, I've done hot smoked salmon, hot smoked turkey, hot smoked chicken, um, hot smoked uh, ribs. So there's a, there's a whole industry out there and lots of information on how you can do hot smoking. I'm probably better at the cold smoking because it's fairly safe and quite easy. If you are doing hot smoking, you have a number of options in your smoker. You can have little chunks of wood like that, um, which you put into the smoker and they basically burn really, really slowly, giving the, the flavour of, uh, of the smoke. Um, one of my favourites is apple. I think it gives a nice mellow flavour. Um, Another type you can do is wood chips, so they burn slightly faster, you probably have to use a few more of those, just find whatever else it is you, you actually prefer. And then what I'll be using today is some apple wood smoked, uh, apple wood smoke wood, um, which I've dried out a little bit here. I'm now going to fill up my Pro-Q smoker. Um, I've taken the cheese, I've already cut it, it, it smokes better because the smoke actually just actually adheres to the outside of the food, it doesn't actually penetrate, so a slightly smaller piece means that you'll have more flavour on the cheese. So here's some I've cut earlier, so I'm cutting them into pieces about this size, um, and I'm going to do six pieces today, um, which will enable me to give some to a neighbour eat some myself and hopefully there'll be some for my mum to nosh on because she's very keen on cheese as well. As an experiment, here's an egg I boiled earlier and I'm going to see if that smokes too. So eggshells are permeable, gas permeable, so I'm hoping that the smoke flavour will go into the egg as well. So I'm going to put the smoke, put, put the wood into my Pro-Q smoker and then we'll go down to the end of the garden and we'll have a look at my smoking setup. Yeah. In order to know how much sawdust you need to put in the oven to dry off, and that's not an essential step, I just like to make sure that there's no residual dampness that will prohibit the, uh, the sawdust from smouldering for the full time. Um, put the sawdust in your Pro-Q smoker to begin with, 
tip it out onto your baking tray and then put it in the oven, low oven about 100 degrees Celsius and leave it there for about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Take it out, let it cool so that any steam can evaporate off it and then you know you've got the right amount to go into your Pro-Q smoker. Um, I don't want a full 12 hours on this so I didn't completely fill it. So um, it's, it'll probably give me about probably 8 to 10 hours on this. Okay, so this is my um, wonderful Pro-Q smoker that my husband gave me a few years ago. I love this thing. It's fantastic, it's modular. So you've got one, two, three, four pieces. Um, it's got a temperature gauge on the top. It's got little air vents here around the side. And it's got little doors here so you can open it up and see um, how the, the food is progressing. And as I say, it's modular, so when I've done um, hot smoked food, I tend to take the middle section out, so I know it's going to get a bit hotter. But it's, um, they've got these little um, catches on the side, so you can carry the whole thing around. I've undone them just to show you this, so take that off. You've got some hooks there you can actually hang food from, but then you need to take the, um, the, the shelving out. So all very easily removed and cleaned. You don't need to clean inside the actual um, drums themselves. I'm sure the flavour uh, gets better the more you've smoked them. So another one and then in this one here we've got a, um, a big bowl. That's normally where you put water in if you're going to be hot smoking so that it keeps the food moist. So you put water or um, stock or whatever in there. And then on the bottom level, this is where you put the fire. So if I was hot smoking, this is where I would ultimately put the fire. But in the meantime, I've got my smoker going on here. So you can see I've got the little tea light underneath there. I tend to put a little bit of um, silver foil there just to um, keep it protected. So I'm blowing it out popping it in there. Hopefully that'll keep smouldering now. Pop everything back on again. Do the catches up so I don't forget and try and lift it with all the cat with the lids not there. Okay and then here I have my product. So you need to put it in so it's not touching each other. Nicely spaced on there. There's my egg. Laid by one of the chickens you can probably hear in the background. So you can see there's still smoke coming out, which is a bonus. Pop the lid on. You won't need a temperature gauge today because it's not going to be hot in there. Close this up. You need to make sure that there is some airflow going through, so we've got the little vents down here. So they need to be opened a little bit so that the smoke comes up here, circulates around the chamber and then comes out through these little holes. To be honest it's not completely airtight anyway, so you'll often get a little bit of um, uh, smoke seepage around the edges. But essentially that's it, I'll just leave that now for, you know, four hours, I'll come back and check on it periodically, see that there's still smoke coming out, make sure um, it's still going, if not you can always use a little blowtorch. Um, I'll come and check on it regularly because I like to look at what's going on. Um, but I'm reckoning about eight hours we should have, about eight hours we should have some smoked cheese. When I've got it, I have to leave it and not eat it for at least a day because that gives the flavours time to, um, the, the smoky flavour to maximise. So I'll see you later. So one of the reasons I set the smoker up down here, particularly because I'm cold smoking, is it's not in the direct sunshine. So if it was in direct sunshine, that would affect the temperature inside because it's all made of metal. Um, you don't want the temperature to get very hot in here if you're cold smoking. 
you wouldn't want it ever to get above 20 degrees. I have seen it said 25, but I would never want it above about 15, to be honest. That makes it sure it's a nice cold smoke and it makes sure that the food inside doesn't spoil. So if you want to know more or you want to learn more about the, um, the, the products that I use, then there's links in the notes. Just have a look there. So uh, it's now quite some hours later. I came and checked on this after about three hours and the smoke was belching out um, and actually the, uh, the the little maze had burnt out within about four hours so it was obviously very dry it burnt very very quickly um, so we're now going to have a look and see what the cheese looks like remember what color it was when it went in Let's see what color it is when it comes out Okay, we've got some very yellow cheese here. I didn't even get a chance to turn it. That's yellow. And that's all smoke. So I'll take it inside. We need to um, leave it for a day or so normally to let the flavors uh, develop. But looking at how yellow it is, I should imagine that you can probably start eating it now. So as soon as we get inside, I'll be tasting a little bit. And look, I have no idea what's going to happen with the uh, egg, whether or not it's gone through to the, um, to the egg itself or it's just stayed on the outside. Uh, I think when I do this again, I might actually just peel the egg, but um, I'll leave this one like this for a bit and then try it tomorrow. I'm so excited about this. I love smoked cheese. I like smoked anything, but I love smoked cheese. I like salted food, but I love smoked food. So I'm very excited. I can see it's, um, it's really, very yellow or orange almost in comparison to the one I've already, the, the one that hadn't been smoked. So let's have a little look. And you can see on the inside it's still the original colour, but on the outside it's that lovely orangey colour. Man, that's smoked. If you like smoked food and you like smoked cheese, that's amazing. Applewood smoked cheddar. Mm. Yum. So if you uh, enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, uh, please like, subscribe, press the little notification bell so you get notified when the, a new video comes up. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.